Hey everybody, welcome back to another Python tutorial. Uh, in today's video, we're going to continue our discussion of the Win32.com library, but in this particular video, we're going to now jump into the topic of events. Uh, heads up, this will be a multi-part series. This first video is kind of more laying the foundations. We're going to build some simple events, and then in some upcoming videos, we're going to see how we can build more complex events and then assign them to Python scripts that we can kind of have uh, sorry, have run in the background. So uh, pretty cool stuff, I think, coming up. But basically, what is an event? Well, inside of our Excel application or Word application, anything really kind of like that, you'll you'll kind of notice that anytime you do anything, it's, it's really an event. So things like clicking a cell, things like saving a workbook, things like updating your links, these can all be considered events. And so Excel, or any kind of really application at that, kind of point is is really listening for these events and when these events happen what we can do is we can actually have certain code run so basically what we would be doing is saying hey maybe every time we activate a sheet in our excel workbook we want some python code to run in the background you know it doesn't have to be anything necessarily complex maybe we just want to print out a statement or maybe we want to change a cell value um, this is a perfect uh, framework for events is because they allow us to kind of be listening for all these different things that can be happening to our particular objects. And then what we can do is we can kind of have responses to those events. Now inside of Excel, for example, we understand there's a whole object hierarchy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my Excel application. If it will let me. Sometimes it has an, a running one in the background and I have to clear it. Let's try this time. There we go. This is what happens when you open and close all the time. Okay, so inside of our Excel application itself, we understand there's an object hierarchy. So we have the application, we have a workbook, we have sheets. Each one of these can be considered an object. And some of these objects have events or basically things that can take place on them. And so what we wanna do is we wanna be able to respond to those events by having some Python code run. So what we're gonna see in today's video is how we can actually take and use the win32com library to create our own Python events that are able to respond to Excel events. Now, a lot of people kind of ask and they say, well, you know, how do I know which objects have which events? Well, if you go to the uh, Microsoft documentation for the VBA object model, so if you just go to, um, I think it's uh, MSDN VBA or something like that. You can just type it into the Google search bar and usually it's the first uh, thing to pop up. But basically you're gonna land on a page like this and then this is basically the documentation for the entire VBA object model. And so in our example, we're using the Excel application. If you go down here, you'll see the object model and you'll see all the different objects that you can work with inside of the Excel application. Now, in our example, we're gonna be working with an application object and a workbook object. So if I open up my application object, I'll notice here there's something called events. These are all the events that can take place at the application level. So things like sheet change, sheet follow hyperlink, um, window deactivate, window activate. And what we can have happen is when these events happen, we can have code run in the background that is able to respond to these events. So if you're ever confused about what type of object has what type of events, simply go to the documentation, find the object you wanna work with and see if it has any events that you can play with. So in our example, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna say, hey, every time we activate a sheet, um, we want to be able to display a message to the user. So if I click the sheet activate event, um, it will give you an overview of it and it will kind of tell you all the different things that have to kind of be passed through if there are any. Um, in this example, we don't actually have to pass through anything, but we'll see that um, in kind of more complicated examples that sometimes we can have multiple objects be passed through. So with that being said, I'm gonna jump back to my Jupyter Notebook and we're gonna start coding. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna import our libraries like always. The first one is gonna be our win32com.client module and we're gonna give it an alias, uh, win32. And then we're gonna be using a new library well, it's not really new, we've used it with the object library one, but we're gonna be using the Python com library. This is another library inside of Python that allows us to manipulate com objects, 
But with this particular one, it will allow us to display messages to the user that are basically waiting after an event has happened. So really we're just using this particular library in order to display the messages that we want to have displayed when an event takes place. Or in some cases, just any kind of message, maybe it's changing a cell value or something along that nature. Um, any kind of response is our message. Okay, so from here, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna simply get our active Excel application. So um, I'm not gonna create a new instance of it. I already have an instance open, so we'll just grab that active instance. So get the active instance of Excel. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna store it in a variable called Excel, and then we're gonna call our Win32 module. I'm gonna call the get active object method. And then from here, I'm just gonna pass through uh, the ID of our application. And then here it's just the Excel.application, so very intuitive. If I print it out, I should see that I now have a new object. Okay, so now that we have our active Excel application, um, what we're gonna be doing next is we're gonna be defining our events. Now, in this particular library for the Win32 library, it is expected that we pass through our events as a class object. The reason why is that we can assign multiple events to the same object. So instead of passing through a list of different functions, what we can do is simply pass through a class object that contains all of those functions that we want to have assigned to that object. And what we're gonna see is that the functions are just simply the events and then the responses that we wanna have happen when that event takes place. So at the highest level, we're gonna create an application event. And all we're gonna have happen is every time we activate a new sheet, it simply just says you activated a sheet. So nothing too complicated. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define our application events. I'm gonna create a new class object called application events. And then from here, I'm going to assign a function to it or a method, whatever way you wanna describe it. Um, define an event inside of our application. Now, technically we can have multiple events happen, so we could have multiple functions, but in our application object, we just want one event. So I'm gonna give it the name on sheet activate. It is very important that we follow a very strict naming convention. We simply take the name of the event itself and then we pass through on before it. And we have to make sure that it's capital O and that it follows this particular naming convention. So whatever the event is with an additional on in the beginning, and that's it. And then from here, we're gonna pass through the self object, so just the class itself, and then any arguments that have to be provided. And we'll see that in some cases, um, there's actually multiple arguments that are passed through. And then what do we want to have happen when this event takes place? In this example, we want something just simple. We want to do something like, you activated a new sheet. Very simple. So now that I've defined my event inside of my class object, I need to assign it to my particular Excel application itself. Well, that's pretty easy actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign our event to the Excel application object. And from here, it's gonna be Excel events. I try to give it something a little bit intuitive, so like Excel application events, Excel workbook events, whatever you wanna kinda of think about it. And from here, I'm going to do Win32 with events. I'm going to pass through the object I wanna assign the events to and the events that I wanna to assign to it. And then just like that, it will assign the events. But the thing is, there's gonna be messages now sent back to us. And we wanna make sure that we print out those messages or what you're gonna see here is that our application would actually freeze. And so what we do is we just wrap it in a true, uh, sorry, a while statement. So while there are messages, keep displaying them. Just something like that. That's how we kind of should think about it. So while true, what we're do is we're going to display the message. Now the message is kind of broad at this point. Technically we can have certain things take place. This might not be necessarily like words, but things happening inside of our Excel application. So we're going to call our Python com module, and then we're gonna call the pump waiting messages method. 
I hope I spelled that right. Perfect. And then from here, what I can do is I can now run my script. Okay, so you can tell here that it's now actively running, so it's listening for our events. I'm gonna put this over here. And now what you can notice is every time I click a sheet, it is now displaying that message back to me. So pretty cool. Now in this example, we did a pretty simple one, but we'll see that we can actually do more complicated ones in future videos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna restart my kernel. I don't want it to be listening for events anymore. And then I'm gonna clear the output. Okay, so now that we've assigned an event to an application object, what happens if we wanna assign another event to another object? So maybe not the application itself. Well, it's actually pretty straightforward. We just follow the same structure that we're doing here. And so one particular event that I wanna play around with is something that is related to a workbook. And that workbook event is called on sheet selection change. So basically we can think about it as any time we change our selection on our Excel sheet, we want something to happen. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to define our workbook events. We're gonna give it a new class name. We'll call it something again, very intuitive, workbook events. And then we're going to define the event that we want to take place. Now the name of this event is sheet selection change, but because we were using the win 32 com library, it's gonna be on sheet selection change. So define an event inside of our workbook. And so we're gonna say define on, very important that we do a capital O, on sheet selection change. And then again, it's gonna take the self object, so the class itself, and then any arguments that could possibly be sent back. And again, arguments can be multiple. I don't necessarily know how many arguments might be passed back to me. And so if I go back to the documentation, if I go down to workbook, it's really far down there. Okay, I go to my workbook object, I go to events, and then I go sheet selection change. And then what we see here are the parameters that technically are passed back. Um, uh, yeah, this is kind of the interesting part. I don't want to say for sure, but you'll kind of notice that the parameters that are expected are also the ones that are sent back to us. So here, again, we're being very broad with our arguments, and we're actually going to print out our parameters, and we're going to see that they're actually pretty much identical to what we're seeing here. Okay, so what we'll do is the first thing is print the arguments. And so we're just going to do print arguments. Um, the first argument is going to be the worksheet object itself. And then the second argument will be our range object that we selected. So again, the first one is the sheet that the event took place. And then the second is the cell that was selected, or in some cases, multiple cells. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to print the range and I'm just gonna print the address. Now, what you'll notice is that the arguments are simply com objects themselves. So if you know what com object it is, you can simply call either the property or method related to that particular com object. So here, I'm taking my range object and I'm simply printing the address of that particular range object. And then I'm also gonna change a cell value inside of my sheet. Now, I'm gonna grab the first argument because that is my sheet object. I'm gonna call the range property to, gra to grab range A1, and then I'm gonna set the value property to equal you selected cell, and then I like to make sure I pass through everything as a string because we gotta be a little bit careful because Excel might not be able to handle normal Python types. And so usually I try to be very strict and just make sure that I'm either passing back um, a string or some kind of just more basic data type, nothing kind of fancy. And then I'm gonna take my range object and then I'm gonna call the address property. Okay, so now that I've done that, I need to now assign this event to that particular workbook object. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna grab the workbook. And that's very simple. We're just gonna create a new variable called workbook. And that will equal the Excel application. I'm gonna go into the workbooks collection and then I'm gonna grab book one. And then from here, I'm going to assign an event to that workbook. Now, in a second, I'm gonna kind of tell you a little bit of a story on this. Um, we'll give it a new name. 
called workbook events. And then we'll go into our Win32 module. We'll call the with events method. And then I'll pass through the object I want to assign the event to and the events that I want to assign to it. So I'm taking my workbook object and assigning my workbook events to it. And then from here, we can actually just run our script again. However, before I run it, I just want people to know, um, some of you might try this. You might say, well, can I just put it at the application level? Technically you can, um, it would still work fine. I try to be a little bit cautious about that because I've kind of run into issues where it seemed like sometimes it was working and then other times it wasn't and I couldn't really get a clear answer as to why that was. Um, I'm gonna keep exploring it and if I come across that answer, then I'll kind of disclose it at that point, but just be cautious of that. Um, really what you probably should be doing is assigning the object itself. Um, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna kind of close everything out um, and then just run it again. And I like to make sure that I have no like hidden ones behind the scenes because what you'll notice is um, it might be actually displaying messages multiple times. And so we don't want that to happen. So a lot of times I'll just kind of close it out entirely before I run it again. And we'll see how to do this in future videos, how we can kind of stop the script from running and making sure our com object was actually like, um, you know, closed and everything like that. Okay. So now that we've done that, I'm going to run it. We can see that is now actively running. And as you can tell, it's now responding to our events. If I add a sheet, it still responds to that event as well. So very cool. I think this is really cool. Um, it's very interesting. Now, one thing to note though, when you're looking at this, again, what are the arguments being passed through? The first one is the worksheet that is taking, the event is taking place on. And then the next one is the, uh, what is it? The, uh, the range object that was actually selected as well. So um, what it's doing here is it's basically printing out those arguments and then we're printing out the address of that range cell and then things along that nature. So very cool. Um, it kind of opens up your own little world as to how you would want to approach this. Um, there's obviously multiple ways that you can kind of approach how you would might want to use events, but we'll see in more in future videos how we can kind of take this one extra step further and uh, you know kind of do some interesting stuff where we can have like uh, Python scripts open up from Excel and then they can kind of connect to more Python related stuff and then kind of have that stuff um, you know import into the Excel application itself. So if you have any questions about events inside of the Win32.com uh, library at this point, you know, please make sure to put them down on the comments below. Um, I know this is kind of a new topic for a lot of people, and I will be completely honest, there's not a lot of documentation on this. It's very hard to find it. And if you do find it, it's sometimes very confusing to kind of walk through it. So I have started documenting a lot of this stuff and I will be sharing that. Um, very soon just so that way you know people have resources that they can kind of go to that's a little bit more structured than somebody putting out you know 20 lines of code and no comments or anything um, but you know just so you know that is coming down the road also if you could please make sure to like the video we always appreciate the support and if you are not already this is maybe your first video please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos. In our next video, we are going to see how we can kind of do more complicated events. And then in a subsequent video, we're gonna be using, um, basically we're gonna have Python scripts open up behind the scenes, and then they're gonna be kind of doing things that are more Python related, and we're gonna see the outcome inside of our Office application. So pretty cool stuff. And then we also have some stuff too, where I'm gonna be showing you kind of how Win32.com is kind of working under the hood. So we're gonna do some basic stuff first where we're just gonna see what the invoke method does, the invoke types method, we're gonna see the data types. Um, and then what we're gonna be doing next is working with the clipboard. So we can actually control the clipboard and we're gonna see how we can manipulate that. And then we're also gonna be covering how we can see all the active com objects that are running at any given time inside of our uh, Windows system. So a lot of stuff coming up. There's definitely a lot of content. Uh, unfortunately, it just takes some time to build it. So we'll see everybody in the next video.